there's a couple of things that you should think about when applying for your PhD programs. And you should be thinking about this as you're crafting or even farther before you're thinking about your PhD application. There's lots of different sort of steps along the way that's gonna be very, very helpful. So the first thing that you should be, whenever you're thinking about your PhD in business administration, this should be probably the only reason that you should be thinking about going and doing a PhD, at least for the first couple of years, is for your love of a particular research project, right? So this is what you should be communicating in your application. You should be communicating to all the different faculty that you talk to about your particular research stream that you are thinking of building and getting into, right? So whenever you are any at any moment when you are going and doing a PhD, doesn't matter what field it is, business administration, chemistry, whatever, should be about a particular thing that you're very, very interest, it, interested in. So if you're looking at 100 different applications and somebody says that they're an Olympian, then now you are branded as the Olympian. Um, the second thing that you should do is read at least a few of the um, faculty's papers that you're applying to. So if the program that you're applying to, just read you know, one or two, that's all you probably need to do, and just get a feel of what they're doing and what they're about, and you can get a sense of that just by reading those couple of articles. Um, and just look for the best ones, whatever one that they're sort of labeling as the best ones, and read those particular ones. Um, not only that's gonna give you a little bit more to talk about with those people if you ever do meet with them and it also leaves you to a craft your story right of how, why you want to go to that particular school and B it allows you to um, maybe vet that is this the thing that I want to do for the rest of my life is the third thing that you should be trying to communicate and I see this a lot and a lot of people see this is um, you, you should be showing some sort of proof of your ability to do research. That's an important thing to think about is you need to be communicating somehow, however that is, that you can analyze data um, and it doesn't matter what kind of data it is, but you could just make a decision on some 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 data and then um, you know communicate this in a in in a paper form, right? So you should be looking at you know dem having some sort of demonstration of that. So number four, this is probably really obvious. Most of you know, just do really well on all of the standardized tests. Um, you would be so surprised and how important that they actually are. No program is ever gonna tell you that you should be just focusing on, on the standardized tests, but they are important. And the fifth thing is you just look for programs that are outside of where you normally think. There is a lot of programs around the world, a lot of institutions around the world that are just fantastic that you would never think about. So for example, if you're interested in strategic management, which is my area, or innovation, or whatever, you could look to all sorts of different schools and different programs. You could look over engineering programs. Sociology has an amazing sort of program on sort of sociology of science and innovation and things like that, and some programs are fantastic. Uh, you can look for, um, you know, I, I don't know, economics programs might be very similar as well. But you, you just need to know if you're applying to those ones, then that's kind of the, the trajectory that you're going to go into. And it's going to be easier to apply to those kind of jobs going forward. And going in and becoming a business school professor might be a little bit more difficult to sort of get into that area if you're, and, you know, it just sort of gives you in that direction, right? It kind of gets you in that particular direction and branded in that direction. Doesn't mean you're not capable in any sort of way, but that's really what happens in the long run. Um, the, the, the sixth thing, and, and I learned this from one of my colleagues actually, is just go to a couple of academic conferences. Go to one. Uh, so uh, the one for, for strategy and innovation and organizational behavior and all of that kind of stuff, stuff other than finance and e even MIS and stuff like that, or whatever it is. In my field, it's academy of management. That's the big one. But there's, I mean, if you're going into physics, you might want to look for the biggest one and go to that one. And you're just kind of really getting a sense of what it like and what it means to be an academic in that field. Um, if it's religious studies, you can go and look for a program, you know, conference in religious studies. They all have a different feel and you're gonna get a good sense of what it's about by going to those particular programs, right? That's really what you're trying, those conferences are going to show you, A, not only, you know, what kind of people are showing up at those things, um, B, 
what is kind of the norms, and then C, what is the sort of questions that we ask and the research that we're currently asking and, and sort of interested in. Um, and, the, and then the seventh thing, and I think this is probably one of the most important ones that often very um, younger folks, and this is myself included, when I started the program um, and started doing a PhD, is you overlook this, and it's just building a relationship with somebody, a faculty member, that you think is really interesting and really cool. That's going to help you out a lot more in terms of getting into a program, particularly if you're going into very high-status institutions. For example, if you want to go to Harvard Business School, start trying to build a relationship with somebody there. And I don't know how to do it. Um, you know, I've talked about this in the past, but you could do things that are very helpful for that particular person. You know, just do things out of the blue that's going to get you through the door. Just do things that are just plain out helpful, right? Um, that they are not going to expect it. And you'd be surprised. Nobody does this kind of stuff. And yet that's going to get you into the door quicker than, than anything, right? So look at one of their papers and try to analyze one of their papers and come up with a different perspective or, you know, just something like that or analyze some data for them. Just do things that are very helpful and do it for free and do it for a somewhat extended period of time. Like I'm talking about, you know, maybe it's six months you do that or a year you do that and you just kind of do it in your spare time and you try to be helpful. That's going to build a relationship much more quicker than applying to different programs and stuff like that. Um, that, that, that's really important to think about um, in terms of getting into programs. You'd be surprised how much it's all about personal connections in terms of getting into PhD programs. Obviously, you need a level of skill and ability and all that kind of stuff, but then there's a lot of personal connections that are involved. So